What's going on guys, welcome back. Today what we're gonna go ahead and do is deploy a serverless project on AWS. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you need to do is create a folder on your desktop for our project. So let's go ahead and do that now. I went ahead and opened up PowerShell. You can use PowerShell, uh, you might use Terminal on Mac, you might use Command Prompt as well. Um, any of these will work. The commands might be slightly different so there's some slight variation, but generally speaking, it's only a Google away if you need it. So let's go ahead and create a directory. So let's go ahead and make a directory called uh, on the desktop called um, AWS serverless. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and change into that directory. And now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and create our project. Now we're gonna use a framework called Chalice. And Chalice is a Python framework for working with AWS Lambda functions. And AWS Lambda is um, AWS serverless, essentially. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and get started with pip and v, or pip, uh, not, no, actually not pip and v, uh, virtual, and, virtual env. So we're gonna go ahead and install pip, pip install virtual env. And once we've installed virtual env, we can go ahead and create a specific virtual environment where all our Python packages will be isolated from our global installation of Python. So that will be for our specific project here. So we've installed virtual env. Now we can go ahead and clear and run the command virtual env venv. And this will create a virtual environment for us. I know the only installation of Python I have on my machine is Python 3.8. So if you have a different installation on your machine, then it will create an installation of the virtual environment with a different version of Python as well. So check your version of Python before you create the virtual environment and if there are any issues. All right, so now we have that virtual environment set up here. So now we can go ahead and run uh, dot slash venv slash scripts slash activate. And that'll go ahead and activate our virtual environment for us. Then we can go ahead here and run pip inst install. And we want to install chalice. So let's go ahead and install chalice. And this will go ahead and get us started with how we can create our project. So chalice is going to be uh, a C, has a CLI tool uh, aspect of it in which we can generate new Chalice projects. So we're gonna go ahead and generate a new Chalice project after we create this, and then we're gonna go ahead and deploy it locally and then deploy it on AWS. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. Uh, we should finish installing shortly. In the meantime, if you guys haven't yet, you will need to create an account on AWS. AWS, I believe, has free trial uh, or has has a layer of compute and storage which can be used for free. And so you can go ahead and do that uh, in this instance here. So once this is finished installing, we're going to run the command uh, chalice uh, new project, and then we're going to put past the name of the project's name. So if we say chalice uh, new project. Um, AWS dash serverless, then it's going to go ahead and generate that directory structure for us. Now we go ahead and say clear and ls, and we can see that it created this directory AWS dash serverless. So let's go ahead and change into that directory, clear and ls again. And now we see we have a dot chalice file, a dot git ignore, an app.py, and a requirements.txt. So now we can go ahead and run the command chalice local. And chalice local is what's going to spin up the dev server uh, right, right here locally on our machine. So if we go to localhost uh, one, two, uh, if we go to localhost at port 8000, then we can go ahead and see hello world, which is the output of this program here. So if we exit out of this uh, dev server, then we can go ahead and take a look at that as well. So let's go ahead and uh, exit out of this dev server if it'll let me. For some reason, it's not responding to my input, so we'll try this. Let's exit out the good old fashioned way. And cd into our AWS serverless. cd back into our AWS serverless. Okay. So there we go. So now we have our Chalice running. Now we want to deploy Chalice on AWS. So now in order to do this, we need to install the AWS CLI. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and go to this URL right here. Uh, https colon slash slash aws cli dot amazon aws dot com slash aws cli v2 dot msi and that'll go ahead and install the or download the installer the windows installer for the aws cli there are different ways to install it for linux or mac os and you can use it with docker as well which you can all see on docs dot aws dot amazon dot com and i'll put the link for that in the description all right, so now we can go back here, and now we can run this command AWS configure. So when we run this command, 
what it's going to do is put our AWS access key ID. And now I already put in an access key, but you, because I already have a default profile, and that's what we are creating here is the default access profile for creating and provisioning resources on AWS. So now let's go ahead and put in that key. So the way to get that key is to go ahead and go to the AWS management console here. So if we go to AWS, let's go back to the console. So this is what this is what the AWS management console looks like when you create an AWS account and you log in. This is what you're going to see. Then you can go over to your account over here where I see where you see Jay Fisher uh, Go Planet over here. Then you can go to My Security Credentials. And then after that, you can go down to access keys and then you see all the access keys that have been created when they were used, where they were used, the device that used them or the service that used them and the current status. So we're going to go ahead and actually make inactive one of these keys. So I'm going to make inactive this key and then delete that key. And then I'm going to create a new access key and then click show access key and then copy this access key ID and I'm going to drop that right here and then I'm going to go ahead and copy the secret access key and I'm going to drop that right there as well now default region name US East 2 is fine and default output format of JSON is fine as well. So now we can go ahead and put that. Now, if you guys haven't configured it before, you would just put what I have in brackets here, us-east-2 and JSON. All right, guys. So now we can go ahead here and uh, let's see. So now we can run Chalice Deploy. Oop, Chalice is not recognized. So we're not in our virtual environment, so Chalice wouldn't be recognized. So we actually have our virtual environment in the folder behind us. So let's go ahead and activate the virtual environment again. And then we're going to run Chalice Deploy. So now it says creating the deployment package, creating the IAM role for AWS serverless dev, and creating the Lambda function. So this is the Lambda function. This is the uh, accessibility between an API gateway and the Lambda function. This is the role for that, because this is how we are able to access our Lambda functions. And then it's gonna go ahead and deploy uh, those resources for us, and then it's gonna spit out the output. Um, so we can go ahead and visit those resources on a public, public IP address or on a public URI. So again, guys, this is, again, how to set up a very uh, basic template for AWS serverless using the Chalice framework. Again, it's creating a serverless function. It's creating an API gateway, which basically will route our request with one hop over to the Lambda function, which will then execute that code, which just in this case returns hello world. Um, this the serverless is excellent because when you want to run compute and only pay for exactly what you use and not have something running 24-7, then you can use use serverless technologies and actually benefit in the terms of the kind of cost optimizations that you're able to make with serverless technologies. Um, and additionally, you can build almost anything with serverless technologies. You need to keep in consideration what you're going to do with state. So state is any kind of data that is being stored. And so when we have data that is stored, it can't be necessarily stored in a serverless function. So we need to keep in mind where you might keep that. And that's an architectural consideration when you are using serverless functions as well. So once this hurries up and deploys here, there we go, creating REST API, and then we have REST API URL right here, and so we can go ahead and copy this right here, and let's just grab that, and then we can go to our, our browser and put that in, and then we get hello world on a public URL. All right, guys, so that's how to do it. That's how to deploy a serverless project on AWS using the Chalice Python framework. We're gonna build a serverless Slack bot coming up soon uh, using this exact framework, probably tomorrow. So we'll go ahead and uh, if you guys wanna configure your environment ahead of time for that sort of thing, is uh, you can use this as well. So thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll get right back to you. Again, if you enjoyed the content and you want to to support the channel a thumbs up and subscribe is awesome so thank you guys again and have a great day